Today we're talking F1 24 and game ideas that you guys have had for the future of the F1 games. I did a video a couple of weeks back going over my big desires and wants for future F1 game titles and in that video I asked you guys to sound off in the comments below and so in today's video we're going through the top comments and the best ideas basically to flesh them out a bit and discuss them openly and uh, get some further feedback because at this time of the year this is when COVID Masters and EA, they've probably already started well underway work on the next F1 game. Obviously, they split studios, so they've actually probably been working on next year's F1 game, F124, actually already for about a year because they do that cyclical thing where half the studio is working on one game and the other half is working on the other game. So they kind of take it in turns, basically. They've done that ever since like F1 2019, was it, when they brought in that initial F2 story mode. So very much a good time to put out feelers and ideas ideas into the world and uh, the hope is that someone out there from Cody's and EA is seeing a video like this and actually seeing the community feedback and to see what the actual community wants and not all this other faff that we've had in the last two years. So the first idea here, which was also, I think, the top comment of that last video was, uh, I'd love to see more realistic sponsors and better liveries. Without mods, it's very hard to make a good livery, which is completely correct. And I say this every year, you know, uh, I do realize that I'm, I'm in a luxury and every PC player is in a luxury that we get to play around with mods and have these different liveries. And I really do feel for any of you guys that, you know, are unable to have a PC. And, you know, I, I've been there before where all I had was a console and you know that that is your choice of gaming platform and that's fine and that's why I've always said you shouldn't be hampered by that if for the sake of you know things like better liveries it's not like you know the you know graphically the consoles can't handle it it's just the fact that they don't have a system to create better liveries and it's unfortunate that with the podium pass system which I don't see them going away from because it's a way that they can make more money post launch obviously with microtransactions you know, it's unfortunate. I don't think we're ever going to get a livery editor, you know, like Gran Turismo, like Forza, unless they were able to monetize, like, the shapes we can use for a livery editor, um, which is an idea that they definitely could implement, but I don't think they will. But, yeah, I think, you know, we've said it before, uh, and I've criticized the Podium Pass pretty much every year for the last two, two, three years, that they just need to make better liveries anyway. If they're not going to allow us to make liveries, they just need to be releasing better liveries. And to be fair, I think on F123 as a whole, they have brought out slightly better liveries on on the podium passes this year, um, but it's still not incredible. There, there still aren't so many incredible ones to choose from. And then also realistic sponsors, that's probably never going to happen, but they could definitely make better fake sponsors. And I, for one, think if you're not going to let us, you know, make a livery, you know, it's going to be a podium pass, at least give about like 15 sponsor slots and allow you to move them about organically over the car. So instead of it just being a fixed, placement on the side pod here on the nose cone allow there to be like a, a movable mappable area where I can move the sponsor throughout the square to really adjust it because there's some liveries they release on the podium pass where there's just like a straight line going through the area where the sponsor is and and there's no good way to change the color sometimes to make it work well so I think that's that's one way they can improve if you know if they're going to be stubborn about not changing the entire system a way to improve it is one adding way more sponsor slots I think also the number of starting sponsors you have in my team for example should be three sponsors a, ma a major one two minors and then you have to unlock a further four, not just starting with one sponsor, because well and truly, it looks so dumb to have one sponsor just dotted around the whole car. I know the whole point is you're a new team starting out in F1, but it just looks really unrealistic because even a new team in Formula 1, let's say Andretti coming to F1, they're not going to rock up with just one sponsor on the car. So adding multiple of those in and then actually allowing you to move it about would improve the system they have now if they're not going to actually go ahead and, you know, make that system better or, you know, a new system with, you know, actually creating your own livery, which I still think would be the peak of, you know, the, liver the livery system, especially for console users. But yeah, unfortunately, I really can't see them uh, moving away from that model. The next one's going to be, I would love to see a fully open world paddock where you have to walk to the next session. So, you know, we talked about living the life 
life and having that paddock vibe. You know, I gave examples of uh, previous year F1 games, you know, F1 2010, not even more recent F1 games like F1 2016 and 17 had these paddock vistas. But this is going one step further about talking about a fully open world where you have to walk from, you know, session to session, you know, walk from your motorhome to your garage. Uh, you know, it's it's a fun idea. I think those are the kind of, that's the kind of thing that may get, you know, the novelty may wear off and then it may become more lethargic in a way. You know, if that's the menu system that you have to walk from session to session, maybe after a while you'd kind of get annoyed by it. Whereas like if it's just a vista in the background and you're clicking menus, you don't get tired of it because you're not actually having to, it's not extra, ex, any extra effort to go to. But then at the same time, that really would be living the life. Like if you, have a, if you had like a POV style walking system where you had to walk through, walk to the pen, walk to like, you know, if they want to freaking still keep supercars in the game, walk to the car, like walk out the paddock to your car and then drive off in it or whatever, you know, just things like that just adding a little bit it's not maybe the most crucial thing to a formula one game but it was the second most liked comment on uh, under that video i did so clearly it's popular enough of, of an idea the next one's going to be able to customize the calendar without a mod would be nice and having more classic tracks that are no longer on the calendar not just three we got right now to give us more options of choosing our own calendar yep yeah, once again like the first one again another tool that pc mods allow just need to be a thing in the f1 game they need to allow customization of the calendar you know after season two okay you know season one you have to have the official calendar after season one you should be able to well you you can move out the circuits but you should be able to have a, a set number that you want not just 10 16 full it should be literally i want 12 i want 17 i want 60 you know i i want a specific number then the order they shouldn't have to be constrained to the order they come in the in, in real life because right now that's the case if you want to change the order around and let's say have you know jeddah like i do a lot of the time as the second last race of the season you have to use a mod to make that happen and then he mentions um uh, classic tracks which obviously is a massive thing you know f1 2013 was really good for that, you know, having like Hareth and uh, all these other circuits. And I think there's other ones that we could explore, um, you know, that are grade one circuits that used to be on the calendar, fan favorites. You know, I think in real life, you have that constraint of like, oh, we can't have, you know, every calendar, every track we want are on the calendar. You know, now we're saying we've got too many tracks, but for a video game, why are we bound by these official restrictions? I think we should be able to have these classic tracks in uh, and, you know, it would just make things a bit more interesting, not only for career mode, but also multiplayer for, for league racing, you know, for, for esports. It could be really interesting to have these classic tracks where it's different, it gives you a different flavor to what we have in real life. Next one, we've got having teams randomly join as an option such as Andretti or High Tech. Have the teams make sense though? Also voting for changes like an F1 manager with the points would be cool. Um, Teams joining the grid randomly, I think that's a, it's, it's a lovely idea. It's a real big pipe dream that I don't think will ever happen because it's so far gone from real F1. Obviously, yes, I know my team is an additional team to the grid, but because it's the player's team, it kind of, I feel like that's how they got away with it, uh, I guess. I mean, I don't know how these conversations go, honestly, you know, in a boardroom or whatever in terms of the red tape of what's allowed. But I feel like outside brands entering Formula the F1 game when they're not in real life F1 will just never happen because of the commercial agreements that these teams have, even with the F1 game itself to, you know, have that exclusivity of being in the game, basically, because that's basically free advertisement in a way. Well, it's not free. I mean, they could pay for it, but it's, it's advertisement they're not getting in real life but they are getting in the game and it doesn't add up basically so that's why i feel they would never have that but it would be incredible to have that you know maybe there's a way possibly you know i'm just thinking out loud here maybe you know to fudge it a little bit the ability for some of the f2 team brands which obviously are already in the game maybe have the ability for them to create an f1 team and join the grid possibly, you know, because then you're kind of, you know, it's a brand that's already in the game. You know, he's mentioned high tech there, you know, entering Formula One, that's maybe a way they could fudge it a little bit. But also at the same time, how realistic is that to have so many other teams joining F1? Not very. F1's been very stagnant in that kind of way. Whereas a lot of these other ideas about changing the calendar, better liveries, they're, they're improving the game and they're still quite realistic because the calendar does change. The liveries do change, whereas F1 teams joining doesn't actually happen that much. But 
Again, at the same time, obviously, I, I love creating stories like that in my career mode, so I wouldn't be opposed to it. I'm just being realistic and playing devil's advocate of, you know, how, how much of a, of a pipe dream is it versus reality. Um, but one thing that is realistic is the second point uh, this person made was about voting changing. They have that in F1 Manager. That, that definitely would be cool to see in the proper F1 game. So having votes on having votes on technical regulations, actually. So instead of a random R&D change, regulation change, how about voting on one? So, you know, if you could see AI's R&D trees, like you could ha have a little look at them, you can maybe then vote in a way, or you just guessed what they were bad at. You can see the comparison, actually, to be fair. You can see the comparison of who's good on aero, who's good on engine. If you could vote for certain changes to try and benefit you, that'd be quite cool. And then obviously your opponents could do that as well. So it may not go in your favor. And then voting things on, uh, like was mentioned, the point system as well. Uh, you know, it's done quite well in F1 Manager. And I think just adds that spice and is like real life as well, because they do vote on these things. It's not just random all the time. So voting on those things would be definitely quite good. The next idea is can we throw in opening a second team in here. I would love my own Alpha Tauri with development drivers, especially with your own idea of forming junior programs for F2 and F3. I think it could work well. You know what? That is a nice little segue from the idea I had in the previous video about opening junior academies and scouting F2 and F3 talents. I think being able to open a 12th team that is your own team and you have to then juggle managing all, you know, both teams in a way and managing three teammates, well, not three teammates, but a teammate and then two other drivers in that team could be quite cool and you have to sign junior drivers maybe and you have to deal with the sponsors and it might affect your budget and your acclaim of the big team if the small team does something it's a, it's a, it's a nice little thought actually to extend the idea actually that we we discussed in the previous video along the lines of the calendar stuff and you know f1 history the next one is every track in f1 history fully customizable calendar would make things so much more interesting i mean i agree i mean like you know like just going back to that point it's such a small thing like really really if anyone's watching from EA and Cody's I would look them in the eye and say this to them it's such a tiny thing of letting the calendar being moved around and fully changing it but like this person says it actually would make such a difference for career mode players playing onwards of season one because it just gives you endless possibilities of having different kind of seasons with different tracks, different variations. And then, you know, uh, like you said, F every track in F1 history, that would obviously be quite a big feat. But it would be incredible. Like, how much playability would you get season to season being able to add multiple different tracks and really swapping them out and just the amount of extra gameplay you get with all these different tracks basically i know that maybe is more work adding a historical tracks so you have to train the ai you have to you know set up everything for time trial grand prix get the online working for every circuit basically but it's it's those kind of things that are actually worthwhile like f1 world making f1 world as a game mode making f1 life as a game mode they spent all this time all this effort making this UI for goals in F1 world, all that time could have been spent with your marketing team or licensing team, licensing circuits and getting them built. And instead we've got F1 world where, yeah, I just don't feel like many people play it. Next one is, I know it's a small one, but uh, they don't move the pits to reflect the previous year's uh, Constructors' Championship. It's a small thing, but I think it'd be a dope addition. And you know what? You know, it is small, but I've, I've, and you can look back at previous videos and quote me on it. I've said this very phrase, F1 fans, we appreciate the small details when it comes to our sport because we love the sport so much. And compared to other sports, mainly, you know, football's so big. F1, it, it, yes, it's growing, but it's still quite small. And especially for F1 gamers, there's an even smaller majority of us that play these games versus actually watch F1. And we, I feel like as a collective, we all really appreciate the small stuff about the sport and the small details of the sport. And these are the kind of details you pick out as a proper like F1 fan who plays these games. You're like, oh yeah, no, we, we're the same pit box and we haven't moved. And we said this about things like the formation lap and, you know, uh, manual pit stops. You know, these little small things you do appreciate. Like, you know, it, it may not get talked about now, but it's, it's a great thing they added back in formation laps and manual, you know, manual pit stops or semi-manual, I guess you could say, uh, and things like, you know, warming up the tyres on the formation lap and actually parking your grid slot. It was a small thing, but it was actually quite a large deal because it's actually something that F1 fans appreciate. So small things like that will go a long way. There are so many other small things that they could change in the F1 game that 
you know, people would appreciate. And along that line, a small thing would be introducing things where when drivers change teams, they change helmets. F1 manager does this quite well. They make, I think it's like bespoke plain versions of every driver's helmets. And then they change, they change the colors out depending on the team. So let's say, yeah, like, you know, someone from Alpha Tauri, Sonoda goes to Ferrari, like they say in the comment, um, they would create a plain version of Sonoda's helmet they would remove the Alpha Tauri stickering, but everything else about the helmet design is the same. And then they would just swap the white and the blue for like red and yellow, let's say. And it's not going to be a realistic looking helmet, maybe not even a great looking helmet, but at least it would be their helmet in the different colours, as you would imagine like a driver swapping over colours maybe for a different team. Or, you know, in case of Hamilton, let's say, they wouldn't change the colours, but just make his helmet, make a second version of it without the sponsors so that it looks looks just a bit cleaner if he was in Red Bull or Ferrari or whatever if he was to transfer a to a different team in the career mode. Kind of heading over the same stuff here in the next comment. Manual pit lane control, like proper manual control, I guess. Classic cars, more of them. Uh, obviously, probably licensing things or, or, you know, I still reckon EA's big plan in the future is to put classic cars behind a paywall. Um, but, you know, it was it, it's a bit of a shame we still don't have the classic cars. Did I use them a lot? No. But occasionally, you find yourself thinking, oh, I might try some, and you've lost that. You've lost that. As, as little as maybe people played with classic cars, at least it gave you that option on a rainy day once in a while just, you know, want to play some classic cars. And I think, you know, now we can have some more modern classic cars as well. So he's mentioned things like the Red Bull 2012, McLaren 2012, you know, having more of these modern era classic cars. Like, I would love to have, like, the Mercedes 2016 car back in, the, the car that Lewis and uh, Nico went toe-to-toe -to -toe with back in the game. It'd be sick to relive that, but with the new engine, with the new uh, you know, handling model, better graphics and stuff like that, it'd be sick. And then, uh, yeah, he says again, wider selection of tracks. This next one and this is where I'm going to end it off today because otherwise we'll just be going and going and going so do let me know in the comments below once again any further ideas you've had to this what uh, to, to any of these in the comments below but to end off uh, the last comment a chassis builder for my team where you can choose parts for existing cars or different presets as you want to uh, you know build the car how you look, want it to look and it might affect the handling and how it feels on track so I spoke about swapping out front wings you know swapping out side pods you know so this could be quite cool as a chassis builder so you build it from the ground up, you change out parts, and there might be attributes about, you know, handling plus whatever, you know, so it might reduce the weight of the car or the, you know, the pitch and the yaw, the weight transfer, and it actually might also change the aesthetics of the car. That would be really cool. You know, I've said it before, like an NFS style changing. And you know what? And you know what? WRC, a game also made by EA and a different Codemaster studio on the Unreal Engine, they have got this. They have got swappable proper building mechanics for rally cars just like Need for Speed do. So if they can do that, I feel like now there is no excuse that F1... The F1 studio could implement that. Whether that would mean they have to switch over to Unreal or they have to, you know, build out a new system on the Ego engine. But the thing is, another studio in your same company has done it for the rally game. So for my team's car, I know for the official F1 teams it's a no-go because of licensing. But the generic F1 car, I can't think of one excuse not to even explore the idea of doing that swappable car part stuff, like actually changing the aesthetics, because it's a generic car. There's no licensing to it. It's a generic Formula One car. It's not tied to anything. Um, I just feel like now is the time. Now is the time. And to be honest, on, on the talk of engines, I feel like, I feel I've seen a lot recently more and more people frustrated and saying that yeah it's time now that Cody's wipe the the slate clean and move to a new engine as much as they they every time we say this they say there is no point to it yet. They go, oh, if we're not gaining enough, we won't move to a new engine. But it's not about gaining enough. I think it's just about having a new foundational platform to build your game on. Because I, I think a lot of people, from what I've seen on Twitter, comments, I think everyone's getting a little bit like bored and stale of this ego engine we've got at the moment. As much as it's been, you know, it's done, it's done the business for this last couple of games. But now's the time to really make the switch to the next gen PS5, Xbox Series X, 
and move to a new engine maybe and that could really open up a treasure trove of you know graphically how the game looks handling wise maybe i don't know or you know wrc i think they they say they use the physics engine the handling from dirt rally but the the, the you know graphically it, it it works from unreal so you know keep the same handling but then move to you know just the unreal engine for things like graphics and you know the, the you know the things with the gameplay i don't know i just feel like yeah it's um it feels like we are in a bit of a hold. Well, we are in a holding pattern for the F1 game. It really has, hasn't gone forward in about, what, three years since F1 2020? Like, really? Really, honestly? Yeah, it's um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bigger debate maybe to have for a different video. I don't know. But uh, it's one that's uh, yeah, always a bit stubbornness, I guess, from, from their side and from, from community side. I think it's something that people want to see. I don't know. Let me know in the comments below about that. I went off on a tangent there right at the end. But uh, apologies. But it's something that obviously is a big contention point for the F1 game. But yeah, that's been it then. Another discussion about game ideas videos, putting them out into the world. Guys, if you have enjoyed it, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below about any further ideas you have. If you are on your own, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.